is the, is the real website for that. And we have some information on my site as well. Gentle pressure on the sacrum can be designed to affect the sacrum or the neck. So what we would see if I wanted to affect the neck with a sacral adjustment would be we would make pressure here, we would see respiration move through the spine, and then a spontaneous movement in the neck. Small, maybe. Maybe the face paper just crackles a little bit. Maybe you feel like your nose is being mashed and you want to re reposition in the head as an early response for this low force adjustment. Okay, something else that we see with this, besides a cracking sound, is a reduction in muscle tension. As a matter of fact, this is one of the major uh, symptomatic benefits, is it can hugely decrease muscular tension, like a four hour massage in 20 minutes. You know, it can really hugely decrease muscular tension. It can change the tone of the muscles. There's different kinds of muscle tension, but some of the muscle tension is caused by nervous system stimulation. You know, in other words, if you're stepping on a puppy dog's tail, it's going to bark, right? So you can squeeze the mouth of the puppy dog, or you can take the pressure off the tail. And that's what this gentle adjustment is like. And when you do that and you hit it just right, and that's what's causing that muscular tension, nothing is going to, nothing is going to relieve that muscular tension like that, because you've gotten to the source of the muscular tension. There's all kinds of other things Heel tension, uh, diversion stress in the feet, you know, pulling the heels down like this. When there's a lot of tension in the spine, maybe somebody's humped up like this in the mid-back, the heels will be very tight. And this could be coming from the sacrum or the neck. So a reduction of heel tension and diversion stress is another response to this adjustment. Now these things also happen frequently with the second, with the third force application you know, traditional chiropractic, we'll say noisy, noisy adjustment, traditional noisy adjustment. These things also happen with, it, with this, but they're, these are the goals of the low force adjustments. And these have been described, these phenomenon, the respiratory wave, and when you move, it's called a somatopsychic wave, and we don't really pursue that so much in this office of the, the somatopsychic wave. Some offices, focus, network chiropractic offices, focus more on the somatopsychic wave. Um, it's not really symptomatically oriented um, care. It's more personal transformational care because people tend to have really big um, emotional responses. And you know, we in my office when I used to do this, we'd have people like crying and you know moving around all over the tables and squirming around the tables and stuff like that. And, it would like it scared all the new people off. So, <laughs> so, so I, I kind of tended to, to bring it down, and you know, you get up and you, you know, you feel a little like you've been meditating. We've also noticed another change in this type of care is a change in brainwave activity towards the meditative brainwave state. So that's one reason that I prefer that we don't chit chat too much during your adjustment. Because if I'm making a gentle pressure on your neck and your jaw is moving and you're thinking, you know, where's it going to go? It's like, it's almost like a moot point. I'm, I just wait until you get done and then I'll do my, do my pressure and hope that it goes in. Um, so, so that's uh, the love force. Now the activator and all that, they've got their own system of analysis that's very consistent with the network spinal analysis, leg checks with head turns and leg lifting and all that. All the methods that I use are very uh, consistent. One thing that I'm not going to talk about tonight, we'll do another class on that, is applied kinesiology and muscle testing, you know, where we go through and test for nutritional supplements and check for weak muscles to balance and hold the adjustments. But I don't do so much of that right now, um, uh, just, just because I use it mostly in exceptional cases where people just aren't getting well that fast. So what I'd like to do now, while we have a few minutes left, would you mind being our demonstration? Sure. What was your name again? It's Dana. Dana. Okay, Dana. What I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to come over here and have a seat on that table right there. 
and you guys can kind of scoot around where you can see her. This is really the only table out in the open. Um, okay, and do you have anything going on that I need to know about? I always have a little tight neck. But. So it's to have some tightness in the neck. You had any accidents or traumas or anything like that in the last year or two? Not in the last year or two, but definitely in the past. Okay. Falling off horses, that kind of Okay, so you used to ride horses when you were young and yes. you fell off horses? a lot. Okay. So, a lot of banging of the noggin. <laughs> banging of the noggin. Okay, great. Well, first thing we want to do, if you don't mind, let's have you slip your shoes off. Okay. Let's have you lie face down, and I promise this will be uh, at least a gentle experience. I was going to say, I promise this will be a, a, a pleasant experience, but who knows, you know. And you have what kind of pet? What kind of what? Pet. I have an Inca, a German Shepherd. Okay. I can tell by the shape of your spine that you have a pet. <laughs> She's got fur on her socks. <laughs> okay. Now put your arms wherever they're, where they're, wherever they're comfortable for you. There's armrests down below where you can put them in comfortable with them, with them on your side like that. Yeah. I'm going to move her here out of the way. Get a full view here. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, just looking at her, if you weren't a chiropractor or a massage therapist or anything, where would you say that she probably was tight? In the center of her back. In the center of her back. Okay. You mean like here? Uh-huh. Okay. Does anybody see tension there? Seems a little bowed. Yeah. What about up here? This is what I'm going for here. Bottom mm -hmm. of her neck. Yeah. Right, right in here. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, so when I feel her neck, what I'm feeling is the right side has a big muscle standing up. It's not big enough to be visible. The right, the left side is more relaxed, so there's some imbalance there. I can feel that there's some uh, like scar tissue in here where maybe she's had a whiplash before. There's been some tearing of the tendons and ligaments down here. The low back feels fairly peaceful. There's not a lot of muscular tension down there. Doesn't mean she's not having pain. I can't see pain, but I can I can see tension and that sort of thing. So we're going to do our basic check. We're going to look at her leg length. Okay, the first thing I notice she has adduction stress, difficulty bringing the legs together. That's usually related to C2 right here. Do you get headaches? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, the right leg is just slightly shorter, not very much than the left. So right now we've got adduction stress and a slightly short leg. We've got a little bit of heel tension, not a whole lot. And what I'm going to get you to look for now, and I'm not going to say it out loud so she doesn't know, <laughs> is these things right here. So not a whole lot of movement moves to about right here. So this is where that, so that's kind of consistent. You're seeing mid-back tension and I'm seeing it up here. So this, everything is moving kind of up to about here. And this area doesn't really move. And so there's a blockage of the, the respiratory wave up through here, not getting through here. So it makes a lot of sense to me that, that this area would be really tight and tense up in there. So let's take a look. Can you lift your head and turn it towards the left side? And then just rest your ear on the table. Perfect. Okay, now when she does that, the leg becomes perfectly balanced. Go back in the middle. Turn your head to the right. Okay, and it actually stays back in the middle. It stays balanced that way too. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to start here to affect there, okay? Let's just see what happens. Tiniest little adjustment. Refine it a little bit. Okay, 
So what I'm noticing right now is that there's movement to here now. Mm -hmm. I saw that. So what that means is we're ready for a any minute. As soon as that respiration hits there, Waiting for. I know. <laughs> okay. But you could see the breath actually moving yeah, further out. Yeah, you could. The breath and it actually deeper. moved into the neck. Yeah. Her yeah. Back so when you know that's what I'm waiting for, it's like, I feel like I need to move, but I'm sure I move. Right? Well, I, Maybe I should do it because I know he wants it. Well, I started to feel like my head was tucking under or something. Like I really like had to. Like you need to, to reposition Yeah, it. I really needed to. Because that's what you wanted. Okay. <laughs> Good, you did correct. Okay. Put your head back in the middle, not done. Oh. <laughs> it did look like the breathing was going further down for back, seeing more and more. It was going to, further down. And, and, and further up. You can see the volume right, yeah. was yeah. Yeah. Right there. Okay, so what have we got? We have balanced legs. We have a decrease in adduction stress. We have the spine moving really nicely all the way up to here. Not bad for just one or two gentle pressures on the spine. Now, will she feel a difference? Go ahead and sit up. Now, will she feel anything different from that? Do you feel like spacey or like heavy or relaxed or anything? Yeah. So, you know, she may, you may not even know anything has happened, but something really profound has happened there. And that's the beginning of helping the nervous system to connect to itself and learn how to adjust itself. And oftentimes, you know, people will go home after an adjustment like that and not feel anything on the table, but a couple hours later, what you'll notice is, you know, well, my neck turns easier. Or you get out of bed the next morning and you feel a loud pop in your low back or something like that. And you don't think, don't think it had anything to do with this, necessarily. So I should think of you. You can things. do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you so much. Yay. You did great. But that's one of the things about the, the low force adjustments that's a little deceiving. You know, when you do the big crunchy adjustments and make a big poppy sound, people get instant relief. They feel something at least right there in that minute. And you may go out in the car and go, wow, I need to get I need to do it again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 15 minutes later. But with these adjustments, you get up and go, I'm not even sure it did anything. And then two hours later, you're back in the car up and you go, wow, I can turn my head all the way. But you don't even think about it. Maybe, you know, it kind of takes the exceptional person to realize, well, that had something to do with my adjustment. Wow, look, I can turn my head. I can look all the way. And I couldn't do that yesterday. So it's a different way of approaching, and it's not real, uh, you know, sometimes it's not real obvious, but the changes can be, can be profound. And everybody's spine is in different shape. Everybody